Hi folks, so here's your introduction on what you're going to be working on for this week for actual assignments. Um, we have worksheets 2A and 2B, which will be um, how to calculate uh, the properties of triangles, as we discussed in class this week, and also a worksheet on how to get some typical information from uh, some geometric objects. So let's take a look at each one. This is the worksheet itself. And what you're going to do is um, just print this out and you can go ahead and fill it in by hand. Um, in this first example up here, you're calculating three, four, five triangles. So this is a, a little drawing of a three, four, five triangle. And you've been given two of the numbers and you got to figure out what's the missing um, missing element. Each one of these answers um, is based on the fact that you're working with the properties of a 3-4-5 triangle. The next one is what can we do um, and how? what are the shortcuts we can uh, take when dealing with a right triangle. Um, and the right triangle is such that the length of each of the legs is always equal and um, the hypotenuse can be determined by taking the length of one of the sides and um, multiplying it times the square root of 2. So if you're given 12, A is equal to 12, then we know that B is also equal to 12, and I can use that number times the square root of 2 to solve for C, or the hypotenuse. The last triangle is the 30-60 triangle, and um, you have been given, I, I didn't write up here A, B, and C, but this is A, B, and C, um, which correspond with A, B, and C sides of the triangle here. A 30, 60, 90 triangle has a relationship such that A is always equal to half of C, and then the B side of the triangle is A times the square root of 3. So, um, in case you've forgotten, these references included in this set for this worksheet is the properties of common triangles. Which has the references for you again. OK, so remember that this 1.732 is what you get if you typed in the square root of 3 in your calculator. And the 1.414 is what you get when you type in the square root of 2 get the square root of 2 in your calculator. So that's all those, those are. Um, but this is your references in order to solve the problem. So let's just do one of each one of these triangles as an example. Um, so I'm going to use a whiteboard here. And we'll start with the 3, 4, 5 triangle. So with the 3, 4, 5 triangle, no matter what, the sides will be associated with each one of those numbers. So A is always going to be the three side of the triangle. B is always going to be the four side of the triangle. And C is always going to be the five side of the triangle. So let's take um, an example triangle. We want to find out is it a 3, 4, 5 triangle? That's usually what happens. We want to find out. Oh, is this a 3, 4, 5 triangle? So I'm going to take a common roof pitch, 9, 12. And let's say we're, we're wanting to know what the length of the rafter is in the roof or the length of that hypotenuse. So we're looking for, we want to know what this is. We'll call this, um, well, we'll call this the C side of the triangle. We don't know what that is want to figure it out. So knowing what we know about 3, 4, 5 triangles, 9 is the value I get by multiplying some number times 3 to get that. And we can do that math in our head, but I'm just going to go ahead and go uh, write it all out. So I'm going to take this 9, and I'm going to take 9 divided by the side that it's associated with, divided by 3. And the answer, of course, is 3. Okay? And that's, we got to remember that that's the answer to that side. Now, that's not 
because it's the three side, that's, that's what we're multiplying times three to get this nine. Now we wanna see, is this truly a three, four, five triangle? What we have to do is take this side and divide by four. So we know the side is equal to 12. We're gonna divide it by four. And if we get the same number here, which we do, then right now we know for sure that this is a three, four, five triangle and the multiplier equals three because we're using three, we're basically taking this three, four, five triangle and multiplying it, making it three times larger. Well, that would make the length of this side nine inches length of this side 12 inches and what is it going to make the length of this side this will be c is going to be equal to three times five so c equals 15 and we've solved for that at uh, uh that problem. So all you, if you know you're dealing with a three, four, five triangle, all you need to know are at least two sides, and you can first test to see is this the three, four, five triangle. And if you don't get the same answers when you do this, you get two different answers here. It's not a three, four, five triangle. But if you do get exactly the same answer to these um, by dividing by three on this side, by dividing by four on this side, then you know you're dealing with a three, four, five triangle. So let's take a look at a right triangle, so A and B equals A, and A equals B, they, mean they equal the same thing. And then C, we know, is equal to A or B times the square root of 2, okay? So if I have a right triangle, where this side is equal to four, then that means this side is automatically equal to four. And if I want to figure out what C is, I would take four times the square root of two. And if we do that in our calculator, we do um, uh, I think I oh no, okay, so let me clear this. I think I have to do 2 squared. There's that number 1.414 times 4 is 5.656. I'll just round to the third decimal place. So that means C equals 5.657. All right. Now, what if we had the opposite situation and we knew this was a right triangle, but you were given this number here, we'll say that that is 17. Knowing this information, knowing that 17 is equal to either A or B times the square root of two, we then know that we can divide both sides by the square root of 2 and get the answer for both A or B. So if I take 17 divided by the square root of 2, 17 divided by 2 squared, I get 12.021. So now the answer is 12.021. Zero, two, one, twelve, point zero, two, one, and that's how we can go backwards and forwards. And then the last type of triangle is the thirty, sixty, ninety. So we get ninety here. We've got thirty here, and we've got sixty here. We have A, B, and C. C equals 2 times A. B 
equals a times the square root of 3. So all I need is one number. If I know I'm working with a 30, 60, 90 triangle, I have to know that I'm working with a 30, 60, 90 triangle, though. So let's say I was given um, 14 here. All right, so 14 is C. C is equal to 2 times A. So let's put that in here, 2 times A. That means if I divide by 2 on both sides, I should figure out what A is. So 14 divided by 2 is 7. So that's working. So A equals 7, C equals 14. Then I now know uh, A equals 7 and B equals A times the square root of 3. So B equals, what is A equals 7 times the square root of 3? So if we do 7 times 3, the square root, we get 12.12. .12 Four, four. So B equals twelve point four. What was it again? Uh, twelve point one two four. Sorry, twelve point one. Let me erase that. Point one two four. And that's how we can go um, from knowing just one number, 14, we started off with this one, but because we know this formula is over here, we can figure out the other two sides. So that's the basics. We go back to the view of the um, worksheet you're working on. Here, you're just filling in the blanks using that information. So you're going to want to have both this worksheet and the properties of these common triangles available to you to solve that worksheet problem or that side of it. I'll go ahead and do another video for um, the Aries and Volumes worksheet.